Parallel TCG has introduced a new wave of Web3 gaming. The game launched and their token is pumping. Things are starting to feel like 2001 again, at least for holders of leading gaming projects like Parallel. And naturally, because of that, I am seeing a ton more questions and interest in buying Parallel. But what should you buy? Parallel isn't new, so there's a lot out there already. As usual, the free roll has you covered. Why are they pumping? The quick answer is the closed beta launch in July with Parallel TCG has been super successful. The game is really fun and the client is well polished. They sold millions of dollars worth of Planetfall packs just a couple of weeks ago, which is the game's first expansion set. And the open beta launch on Steam and Epic is coming later this year. But most of all, gaming is the meta and Parallel Studios has both the best playable game to date and the most exciting game still in development. More and more, this is all becoming about the hype and speculation around Colony. Colony is the second game that Parallel Studios is producing, and it's an AI-driven sci-fi simulation game. They're describing it as a 1.5 player experience where you have a relationship with your AI avatar, you teach it and give it suggestions, and your avatar is playing for you 24 seven, interacting on the blockchain and trading with other AI avatars. Very, very cool. It's literally a new genre of gaming. It combines two of the hottest sectors in technology, blockchain and AI, with the biggest sector of entertainment, gaming and all of it is powered by Prime. The Parallel community has been saying Prime will hit $11, or $111. The reality here that I wanna call out for you is that it's really a popular meme within the community. You see the Parallel logo looks an awful lot like an 11. Uh, and thus, anything uh, that requires a number, 11 is a key or lucky or superstitious number, no matter what you like to call it. So we call for Prime to hit 11, then we call for Prime to hit 111. But when we're talking about the token for a card game, $111 seems pretty ridiculous, right? Even if it's a really great card game, I don't think $111 is a serious prediction by anybody. It's a meme, don't take that as financial advice. But when we factor in Colony, the upside narrative changes really quickly. Colony is a new kind of game, a new genre altogether. Will it be a hit? That's anybody's guess, but when something is truly novel, the potential is almost limitless. It's going to be a really fascinating way for people to interact with AI. You think ChatGPT is fun and got everyone's attention when they started asking it questions? 3D AI avatars in a virtual game world take this to a whole different level. And alongside of that, uh, Parallel has also been developing AR and VR features for the TCG since the beginning. And while I've not seen anything indicating that this is the plan today, I don't think it's a crazy stretch to imagine that we'll be visiting our colony avatars in VR someday too. It's super early and nothing is a sure thing, but man, it's pretty easy to imagine colony becoming massive. It is for me anyways. So the upside on Prime is significantly higher than any valuation you might put on the trading card game. Avatars are the cornerstone of Colony, so it's pretty easy to see their upside too. All that said, Colony is still in development. I imagine we'll be testing it out sometime in 24, but today, today you can buy Prime and or you can buy Avatars, but that's really it for now. But playing Parallel TCG is earning me Prime every single day, and that can be you as well if you're playing with NFT cards. The emissions are currently a bit on the lower side, so you aren't missing too much yet, but they are increasing. Today we're at roughly 30%, and for me, running a 40-40 deck, uh, that earns about half of a Prime to three quarters of a Prime per day. That's currently worth more than three and a half dollars uh, per day, but with a higher rank, with more keys and more games played, that number could be quite a bit higher. At full emissions and today's prime price uh, of over seven and a half dollars, uh, that's worth something like $500 a month, not too shabby. 
So the reality is the better that Prime does, the more valuable that the NFT cards and the keys that produce Prime within the TCG become as well. Playing and owning NFT cards also gives you the ability to create an Echo, which is a new NFT copy of the same card that produces Prime as well, but it cannot be used to create an additional Echo. You're going to have to spend some of your hard-earned Prime to create that Echo, but once you've done that, you can resell it or use it yourself. Parallel is an OG gaming project. They've been around for over two and a half years now, and there's a lot of collections out there. So let's quickly run through all of the different options because there's quite a bit and you may or may not want all of it. Prime itself is really the easy button. In the end, everything is designed to benefit Prime and it's the most liquid option out there as well. But if you're like me, then buying and holding a token only is pretty boring. I'd much rather play a game and use the NFTs. So if you want to be in on the ground floor for Colony, it's time to pick up an avatar. Uh, like all NFTs, the prices are going to rise and fall, and this is not financial advice. They are literally currently at their all-time high, so maybe consider waiting for things to cool off a little bit. Or jump in right now so you don't miss the train. Uh, the reality is I sold my extra avatars at the initial top, but... I didn't buy back as many as I wanted when the prices came back down. So I'm not the guy to tell you if we're only hours away from cracking a 1 ETH floor price, but I am certain they're going to fluctuate plenty. Just don't ever be the guy that FOMOs the top. If you want to play the TCG, hit my referral link below and create an account so that you can get started. If you like the game, consider picking up some of the NFT cards. The more that you play with, the more that you're going to earn for each win. Even if you don't want to play, you could still consider investing in the cards. Good ones will keep rising in value, at least as long as Prime keeps doing well. If you like to gamble, you can load up on Planetfall packs. Collector packs are much more, but have the best odds at the best cards and assets. Player packs are a much better price and a great way to build your collection if you intend to play, but you're going to have lower odds at the rarest assets. Next up, we have the keys. Keys are utility NFTs that provide benefits both in and out of game. Here is the Echelon Wiki where you can review all of the different NFT assets. I've linked that below as well, but let's take a look at the keys because these tend to get a lot of interest. You have the Galaxy Key, which is going to increase your prime emissions by a random amount. This is a really fun one because it hits something like 20% of the time and uh, is going to provide you with a prime boost if you win that game of anywhere from 33% to 300%. It's a lot of fun when that message pops up. It pops up before the game uh, so that you know you're going to get a boost and then if you win the game afterwards you get to see how big that boost was. The overclock key is going to increase your prime earnings for win streaks, so if you're good at the game, this is definitely one to consider. The multi-fold key is going to allow you to play multiple copies of a single card while only owning one NFT. Please note that this is not a benefit for legendary cards because you can still only play one copy, but if you've got a rare or uncommon card and you only have one copy but you want two or three of them in your deck and you want the emissions for having all of the NFTs in your deck, then this is going to make that much easier to achieve. The Surge key is going to increase your renown, which is XP for your card, allowing you to create echoes faster. The Prismatic key selects a random parallel each day and gives you a boost, it gives you boosted prime earnings when you win games with that parallel. Finally, the Gravity key grants you a chance at legendary rewards such as tournament tickets, titles, and emotes. Here we're looking at your keyframe inside of the game client itself. As you can see, I have two slots unlocked in my keyframe. That is the default. I have filled both of those slots with a gravity key and a prismatic key. And since those are the only keys that I own, those are the ones that I play every day. However, if I purchased a third key and wanted to run it at the same time, I would need to pick up a prime key first. That would unlock an additional slot within my keyframe and allowed for a third key to be played at the same time. 
However, I don't have a big need for that because the prismatic key selects a random parallel each day. So there are several days during the week when I'm not really using the prismatic key anyways because I primarily run Cathari or Marcolian decks. You can also unlock additional key slots with a prime drive. A prime drive is what you get when you combine a prime key with a catalyst drive, two different rare and expensive uh, NFTs within the collection. However, if you have a prime drive, uh, that is not only going to uh, increase your keyframe, it is going to allow you to get a portion of all of the prime sinks within the ecosystem as well. So you can passively earn prime uh, by having the prime drive. If you're bullish on prime and a whale, this is the NFT asset that you're looking for. Next up, we have masterpieces and parasets. Another great option for collectors. A masterpiece is the one of one edition of any given card and each card has a masterpiece. If you happen to own the masterpiece for a particular card, then you get a 1% royalty on all sales of that card. Parasets are a subset of the Genesis collection that can be staked to earn prime. The PS15 set is the OG Paraset and most desired by collectors. If you can't swing the full set, Ketraxamine and Neutron Bomb are the best cards in that set in that order. Cards come in several variations. For playing the game and earning Prime, they are all equal. Same card, mostly the same emissions. Apparition cards are the free non-NFT version that you get in-game. First edition cards are the base NFT version. You can see that here in the top left. Special editions are a more rare version of the same card. They earn more renown or card XP per win, but the same amount of parallel. You can see that on the right side here. Then finally in the middle, we have perfect loops. Perfect Loops are equal in rarity to a special edition card, but they have animated art which makes them much more desirable because you can see that animation in game. Cards also range in rarity from common to legendary. You can play three copies of any card in your deck except for legendary cards which are limited to one copy. Prime rarity NFTs are not playable cards today, but the, they are the utility assets like a prime key or cosmetic like a card back. Planetfall is going to introduce some prime rarity cards as well as natural language cards. Natural language cards will have an animated language that shifts from the parallels given language to English when you play it in game. It looks very cool in the teaser. In fact, each of the five parallels within uh, the game's lore have their own unique language that has been created as part of the overall lore. How cool is that? Then there are cosmetic NFTs as well. Card backs have been around since the beginning, but they've also introduced card frames, field backs, and paragon skins as well. Some of them are acquirable in game, some of them will be acquired in the packs, and not all of them are NFTs. And if the card collections weren't confusing enough for you, there's also multiple blockchains involved. Most of the cards are on Ethereum mainnet, but some of them are on base as well. Use the priming website to track the various prices so that you don't overpay. Cards on both chains are usable at the same time in game. Remember, a first edition, a perfect loop, a special edition, they're all the same card. So if you're only concerned with earning prime in game, then it doesn't matter which version you get, grab the cheapest one. You would think that the first edition is always going to be the cheapest, but that is not always the case because of the odd way that the cards are split amongst the various chains. So I always recommend that you double check and make sure that there's not a version on base that might be a better price. Finally, we have Echoes as well. When you play with your NFT cards, you're going to earn Renown, which is experience points for your card. Once you've earned enough renown for a given card, you can pay an additional fee in Prime to mint a copy of that card, and the copy is considered an Echo. The Prime fee starts very high and very slowly comes down until someone pays the fee and creates an Echo. 
That causes the fee to go back up. Wong is currently one of the most expensive and best cards to own. About a month ago, it was reselling for around $800 on the secondary market, and I did not have an NFT copy of that card. However, my friend did. We waited for another month until the fee in Prime uh, to create an Echo had come down to a little under 50 Prime total. At the time, Prime was worth about $3, so it cost me roughly $150 to create an Echo of Wong. However, the price of Prime today is over $7.5, and that card still costs under $800 to purchase, so did I make a good decision there? We'll see. On the flip side, uh, I had a need for a more common card, the Mantis Corsair. I only owned two copies, but wanted to try playing three copies in my deck. And since I had been already playing with the two copies that I owned, I had already earned enough renown to create an additional Echo. Because that's not a very popular or expensive card, the fee to create that Echo was only 0.2 Prime. So that was a really great deal. And to be clear, today nobody is making a serious profit selling Echoes. But as the game gets more popular and there's more demand for more of the cards, uh, that could change very quickly. So for now, we're stacking up our Renown and our Prime and we wait for a juicy opportunity. So what should you buy? That's a personal question and it really depends on how you want to approach the project. If you're simply looking to make an investment, then I think avatars and prime have the most upside by a long shot uh, and probably your best bet. However, keep in mind that both of those things are currently at all time highs. So when that is the case and I have found something that I'm interested in but nervous about the high price, I like to just grab a little bit, whatever you consider an affordable amount that you can afford to lose some money on, uh, and just grab a little piece so that I don't completely miss the train in the case that things really take off. Because in this world, you just never know. You might wake up and avatars are all of a sudden a three eighth floor price, uh, and you have now can't afford to buy anything. Uh, so uh, I try to avoid that scenario by buying a little bit now and then I dollar cost average or DCA as the prices come down and better opportunities present themselves. That will bring my overall average buy-in price down as I do it uh, and put me in better position uh, to profit on those purchases in the future. However, if you're a DGEN, just let it fly. However, if you're like me and you want to actually play the game and, and start earning Prime, then the best option today is really to start buying the cards and get a full deck. Let's take a look at why you need a full deck and why that's the most important factor for play and earn. Here you can see a chart and it breaks down what percentage of your Prime reward you receive when you have less than a 40-40 uh, NFT deck or less than a hundred percent of your cards are NFTs and Take a look. It's exponential. So half of a deck does very little for you three quarters of a deck still doesn't do that much either in fact the <laughs> The biggest earnings increase you're gonna get is when you purchase that 40th NFT uh, to get to a full deck that is over 30% uh, increase from just that one card alone. But once you get to the full amount uh, and you've got a full deck of NFTs, then you can start considering the prime keys. Or then you can start considering the keys, which offer a multiplier on top of uh, your regular earnings. Okay, let's quickly go through all of the different collections out there so that you have an idea. I have linked all of these below so you can get to any of the different NFTs that you are interested in purchasing. This first one is the main collection. Uh, this is the majority of the cards. Uh, they are in Ethereum and uh, you're going to find a lot of what you're looking for in here. This should be the default if you don't know where to look. This tab is the same set of cards, but on base. Important to note, the gas here is much, much cheaper, so it's a better option when prices are equal. However, the base collection does not have all of the cards, and uh, 
not all of the cards have all of the same supply on base. So you're going to want to check both collections before you make a purchase. This tab is the Battle Pass cards. Now you can see that there's just a couple of them so far, but every month if you purchase the Premium Battle Pass and reach level 30, which is very doable with regular daily gameplay, then you're going to have the option to mint a copy of that month's Legendary Battle Pass card. This is the Planetfall collection. Now those packs won't be able to be opened for at least a couple more weeks. So for now we just have packs and the uh, promotional card backs. Over here we have the Echoes. These are on base as well uh, and uh, there's only echoes for cards that have been created by players. So not all of the cards are in here and not all of these are an efficient price today. In the future, I expect this will be the cheapest place to find a copy of a card. If you're interested in learning more about the lore, then good news, Parallel has produced a series of comics. They come in a variety of rarity tiers so that you get a different cover on the comic depending on how rare it is. But they all have the same comic inside. You can share it with your friends. And this is a really cool way to learn more about the lore of Parallel. They've released three out of a series of six so far. And the fourth comic, I believe, is going to be coming in the next month or so. Over here we have Parallel Companions. Companions are very limited in supply because honestly the plan for companions changed along the way. That happens when you're this early. Uh, companions are a cosmetic item that will appear in game after a future update. They are very rare but not cheap at all. The companions can be seen in the avatars as some of the more rare avatars have a companion with them as well. So these have at least a little bit of a connection to Colony. The lore section. Uh, this is where you can get what you need to create a companion if you want to create one yourself. Uh, you're going to need a bunch of these shards. Jump into the Discord and ask some questions uh, if you're interested in doing that. Finally, we have the Cosmetics Collection. This is a new collection, but these are cosmetics that were offered in the in-game shop and purchasable with Prime. Uh, if you want to get your hands on one of these, you're going to need a wallet and you're going to need to mint a copy when it is available in the game store.